So you're given a triangle, maybe you've got a side and a couple angles or a couple sides and an angle, and you're trying to figure out some of the other pieces that you're missing. How do you do that? What's up y'all, I'm Tom, this is Like a Math Class, and we're gonna get into it using what's called the sine rule. Let's get to it. Now I call this the sine rule, but this is also called the law of sines. So you might see both of these things re refer to what we're about to do right now. What we have here is a non-right triangle. This is very clearly a non-right triangle, which is when you use the law of sines or the sine rule. It's only done with non-right triangles. Can I stress that enough? Only with non-right triangles. Okay, so if we call this angle A, then this is gonna be side A. And if this is angle B, we're gonna call this side B. And if this is angle C, we're gonna call this side C. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna refer back to a formula that we did for the area of non-right triangles. So make sure you check this out, check that video out here if you haven't seen that already. But the area of a non-right triangle, we actually wrote it three different ways. One way we could write the area formula was one half B, C, sine A. Another way we could write the area was one half A, C, sine B. And the last way that we could write this area was one half A, B, sine C. Those were the three ways that we could write that formula uh, using the area of a non-right triangle. But what it also means is that for this triangle, we could find the area in three different ways. So the area is not gonna change. So that means this area is equal to this area is equal to this area. So I'm gonna just take two of these to start with. So if I've got one half BC sine A is equal to one half AC sine B. If these two things are equal and I wanted to start simplifying this a little bit, these one halves would simplify out and I have side C in both of these. So if I divided both sides by C, those would cancel out. So I'm left with B sine A and A sine B. The natural need for some kind of order and organization in this makes me want to get my A's and my B's together. So if I divide this by sine B and I divide this by sine B, I'm left with B over sine B times sine A. And on the other side, I'm left with just A. Well, of course, now I'm gonna divide both sides by sine A, and what I'm left with is B over sine B equals A over sine A. Well, that's kind of cool, but what if I, if I did the same thing with the green and the purple formulas? I'd have one half AC sine B, and that's gonna be equal to one half AB sine C, again, with some easy simplifying from one side of the equation to the other, I'm left with C sine B equaling B sine C. Again, let's divide both sides by sine C and divide both sides by sine B, and I'm gonna be left with C over sine C is equal to B over sine B. So what does that mean? Well, if I've got purple and green equal to each other and green and red equal to each other, that means purple and red are equal to each other. So I'm left with A over sine A is the same thing as B over sine B, which is the same thing as C over sine C. That's amazing. And why is that amazing? That's amazing because if I've got this pair or this pair, or this pair, if I've got any of these things, as long as I've got a matching pair, like of an angle and the opposite side, or an angle and the opposite side, angle, opposite side, as long as I have one of those pairs, and then I've got one of anything else, I can find the rest of the triangle. So if I had these two, and this side, well, I could just use it to find this angle. Or if I had these two and this angle, I could find this side. I could find all the different combinations. That's amazing. But what's even more amazing is that we could do this formula another way. We could also write the same exact formula 
flipped. So sine A over A is equal to sine B over B, which is equal to sine C over C. Well, now why would that be necessary? Well, that's necessary because as you start solving for different sides or angles, it's gonna be easier if your unknown is in the numerator. It just kind of saves you a step or two of your algebra work. Now, it, it doesn't actually matter if you use this set or this set for any of the problems we're about to look at, as long as you stay consistent. You have to have all of your angles on top and all of your sides on the bottom or all of your sides on the top and all your angles on the bottom. So let's take a look at an example or two and see what we come up with. All right, so here we've got a triangle. Find side BC. So this is the one we're looking for right here. We're trying to find this side. If angle B is 115, this is 115 degrees. Angle A is 45 degrees. And AC is 12 centimeters. So that's going to be 12 centimeters there. Okay, so we're going to try and find what this side is. So let's set up our equation. I brought down my equations from up above so that way we can reference them. But basically, we said if we've got a pair of sides, a side and an angle, and we've got one of the other pieces, we can find the opposing piece. So whether if we have this side, we can find this angle, or this angle, we can find this side. So we basically have that here. So we're looking for a side. So I'm gonna use this top idea, the, the framework up here. So I've got 12 over sine of 115 is equal to BC over sine of 45. All right, so I need to get BC by itself. So I'm gonna multiply both sides by sine of 45, sine of 45. These two are gonna simplify out and I'm left with BC equaling 12 times sine 45 over sine of 115. Let's go to our calculator. I'm gonna use my fraction option. I always like to use my fraction option whenever possible because it helps me keep my calculator looking exactly like it does on my paper. So I'm gonna do alpha y equal, and you're gonna choose the first option, and I think your calculator might say uh, n over d, if I recall. So we're gonna have something that looks like this, and now I'm just gonna do 12 times sine of 45. And in the denominator, I'm gonna have sine of 115 degrees. And I hit enter, and there we go, bc, is equal to 9.36 dot dot dot. So we'll just stick, we'll just stick it at BC equaling 9.36 centimeters. That's rounded properly, and that's also three significant figures. So 9.36 centimeters. Fantastic. Again, let me just show you that you could use this. I know this is a little excessive, so if you want to skip forward, feel free to skip forward, but here's why you can use both of them. It doesn't really matter. So if I go with the bottom version, I've got sine of 115 over 12, and that equals sine of 45 over BC. All right, so now to get these two things equal to each other, I have to multiply both sides by BC, to simplify this out, and I have to multiply both sides by 12. So I would just kind of cross multiply, as we say. So BC uh, times sine of 115 is gonna equal to 12 times sine of 45. Well, now I need to get BC by itself, so I'm gonna divide by sine of 115, divide by sine of 115, those things go away. So BC, is equal to 12 times sine of 45 over sine of 115. And here you are seeing that we have the exact same thing over here that we have over here, but what we had to do was kind of one extra step. If you're not worried about that one extra step, don't worry about it. Stick with one formula and just stick with that all the way across the board. If you're a little bit more fluent with this stuff and you wanna be a little slightly more efficient with your time, then pick the one that's most appropriate where your unknown is in the numerator of your proportion. So there's our first example, there's our formulas. 
this is when you hit like down below. And you also want to keep an eye out for our website that's going to be coming up where you'll be able to get some extra resources. Let's get on to our next example. All right, in this example, now we've got triangle LMN and we've got N equaling 10. All right, so N opposite side is going to be 10. L is 4.9. Side L is going to be over here. That's going to be 4.9 and angle L is 29 degrees. So here this is 29 degrees. Find N. So this is what we're looking for right here. We're looking for this angle. It's gonna be pretty straightforward. It's similar to stuff that we've seen before. And I'm gonna do my unknown in the numerator. So I'm gonna have sine of N over 10 equaling sine of 29 over 4.9. Now all I have to do is multiply both sides of the equation by 10 and sine of n is equal to 10 times sine of 29 over 4.9. Again, let's grab our calculator and oh wait a minute, before we grab our calculator, we don't want to find sine of n, we want to find the inverse of this because we're trying to find angle n. So here's two options. Calculate the, the right side of the equation, get the decimal and drop that in, or take the whole chunk and the whole equation and do the inverse of that. Let's do both ways real fast. So if I did, if I did this piece first, I would have, again, let's use our fraction option, 10 times sine of 29 over 4.9, and I get this crazy value, that sine of n, is equal to 0 0.989407 dot dot dot. Now, if I'm doing this on an exam or on your homework, you want to keep the whole decimal going. So uh, just put those dots on there and then do the inverse with the whole value. So my inverse function is going to be the inverse of sine of 0 0.989407 dot dot dot. And when I do it on my calculator, I'm going to do second sine inverse, and I'm just going to arrow up, and then I'm going to hit enter, and it'll bring down the whole value into that equation for me, or into that operation for me, and then when I hit enter, I get that n is equal to 81.65, which is 81.7 degrees for that angle. So 81.7 degrees. Now again, let me show you. You could go from here right to n. n equals the inverse sine of 10 times sine of 29 over 4.9. It seems like it's going to get kind of messy, but this is actually a good thing because what this is going to do is it's going to show you that you can do complex equations in your calculator, which is what it's meant for. Do the complex equations in your calculator. So I'm going to hit second sine and then I'm going to do my alpha fraction button. And now I've got my fraction inside my inverse sine. So I can still do 10 times sine of 29, and that's going to be over 4.9, and I should get 81.65313, same exact thing. So it's just like that. It's that straightforward. Use the calculator to its fullest potential. I've had students who try and do piece by piece by piece. They mix something up. They have their order of operations come out wrong. They carry something down from the top incorrectly and, and it all just gets messed up. So on your paper, set up your equation, maybe do some rearranging and write it down this way and then just let the calculator do its work. You don't need to go step by step by step by step for every little thing especially if it's a calculator question. So that's the sine rule or the law of sines. We've got one more rule for non-right triangles. That's called the cosine rule. And we'll get to that in the next video. I'll see you there.